an intense six seventy two hours whatever it's been as the countdown to the start of uniting for Ukraine and the end of the operation in Tijuana um in essence over in the past three and some weeks there have been a total of thousands of volunteers um tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment food um donated there's countless hours by all sorts of volunteers from so many countries and continents who came together and all to get 20,000 something like 20,000 Ukrainians across the United States um i think more importantly we've shown a completely different model for migrants and refugees country and we've shown that when community is involved when community bands together and helps other people will help and you create organization and um, systems to help the government the government will help you um, and this has been such a learning experience and so many people just came with no real talent for this but talent for organizing and moving and risk assessment collaboration i think what really happened here was a change in how organizations saw themselves and how the border patrol and consulate and two countries and everyone how how they were able to work together towards a common goal um towards peaceful passage of people it's not to say it couldn't have been better there's a lot of learning that had happened and i'm sure we've missed big things but from legal desk to help catch potential minor trafficking to a med amazing medical um tent that stopped you know that i'm sure saved lives um a volunteer vetting process i mean i am sure there have been smoother operations but i can't imagine a a, a operation that gave people so such faith in humanity and such a warm welcome and such a uh profound sense of dignity and that's really you know when people came they were welcomed like they were guests not pitied they were welcomed like people who had fled everything but had a future came through you know they they also were treated like they had a past they were fed ukrainian food there were ukrainian songs there was a sense of humanity of helping the women and children and elderly and sick everything that russia is not everything that putin is not and there was a willingness to risk to do things that were scary and had never been done and so this collaboration between mexico united states and organizations nonprofits and the volunteers who were often you know mostly either random people or churches whatever it was has just changed how we think things at the border, things for refugees can be. The last of the volunteers had left the hub 
that are allowed to pass. The rest will be going on to Mexico City or have to go back to Europe and um, they'll have a different path to United States. But we've touched so many lives. We've been touched by so many people. We've um, been supported by our spouses and our loved ones in spite of the fact that we had been absent from their lives for the past three weeks. Um, we have been addicted to a feeling of empowerment and helping. Um, but we've also been addicted to the idea that we can make a difference. So I just want to say thank you to all of the volunteers. Um, thank you for to the refugees, the displaced people who trusted in us. And um, just the story, you know, we put a bus, uh, we, we were told by the government, uh, there were 150 spots left. We thought there were only 150 people and so we told the government that there were 150 people left. And they said, okay, 150. It was 2 a.m. Um, there weren't a lot of buses going because the system was down at the border patrol. And when the, pe when the people loaded on that bus at 3 a.m., it was to be the last bus. And... It, it became clear that there were more than 150 people. And so we, we ended up triaging, you know, putting the elderly and the sick and the families and those who came first. And so what we had was about, was exactly 31 people who, mostly single, a lot of men, um, some women, some elderly but not too old and so those people really would would probably you know they'll either be stuck in Tijuana or go back to um, or have to go back to Mexico City it's going to be not a pleasant situation and there were tears and there was disappointment and there were fears they had traveled so long for so many days they were so tired. They just, they, they were right there. They could see the border. They could see that border from the sports field. They could see America through the slats of the Trump fence. And I was a um, acting as a security. So I was keeping them from getting to the rest of the group. And, you know, I was, I was telling them, guys, you're going to get in one way or another. And then I wanted to say... Or sooner or later, because I, I I didn't want to put that idea that they might not get in today. I didn't want to put that idea into their brains. But I could see their worry and their energy and their fear. And the other bus went off and they and they didn't want to leave. They were standing right there by the gate. And um Anatoly, one of the security guys, um, or maybe it was Alexei, uh, Alex, came and he said a prayer. He said a prayer because it's the Orthodox um, Easter, Pascha, that's today now. Hoping that border police and everybody would would see them, would hear them, would feel for them, and not leave them at this hub. And this hub was just so empty now. You know, there was just a handful of volunteers and these refugees who had come so far. We, we, we actually got to hang out with them and hear their stories and, and, and see their tears and feel their gratitude and this like feeling of I've, I'm almost there and one of our volunteers Zina she said you know 
At 5 p.m. we were told there was going to be nothing, no more. And then CBP, like Pharaoh, you know, this heart softened and said, let them come. And then it's like that last moment when, you know, the Pharaoh says, you know, is chasing into the waters. And then we pray and the Pharaoh eases up again and, you know, this, this power, this ultimate power just says, yes, the 31 can come. Um, happy and beautiful moment. You know, their, their, their faith in God, you know, was so strong and I'm sure it was reaffirmed. But to me, and, I, and I'm sure to them as well, their faith in humanity, in governance, in that law can be human, that government can be human, that it can make a just ruling. And given what they've come, come through, given what they've seen, I can't imagine a better message for them to come through but for them to feel like they matter like they are people who have come a long way who are right there and just to be understood very tough month two months of war of carnage of just complete inhumanity and to have been able to be part of this mission, of this historic, uh, really, truly, I think, um, paradigm-shifting event has been r really one of the greatest things that I've been a part of. Thank you to all people who brought me in, the, the two women who are traveling, who got us to raise the funds for them to come that brought me into this and all the people who have been working so hard to support this and make this happen. I've seen so many people who have awakened to the idea of helping and volunteering. I, I, I hope this is something that's a seed that just keeps on going, so... Thank you to Jeff, Jet, and Chris of the Consul, Adriana and Enrique of Mexican government, Aaron Lewis of the uh, Mexican police, uh, Ole In of Vlad, Nastya, and even David Slavodenko, <laughs> um, Yana, Michelle, I mean, just so many people, our, our board, the medical team, just so many people, so many people who never knew each other, who came together and organized and just was care of these people to provide them safety, to provide them comfort, to provide them dignity and did an amazing job. Thank you, everyone. Mission accomplished.